Let's find out who really rules the animal kingdom in Animix from Blue Orange Games. Hey, I'm Andy at Board Game Barrister, and this play along tutorial is designed to guide you through your first game of Animix as you play it. So feel free to grab your game box and play along. Let's start by getting that box open and retrieving our game pieces. Inside that box, you should find two punch boards with a total of 30 mountain tokens, and two sealed packages of animal cards. There will be moments throughout this tutorial where I suggest you pause the video while you get caught up in your own game. Let's pause here while you get your box open, punch out your tokens, and get those cards unwrapped. Okay, we're ready to get set up! The first thing you want to check is this chart in your rulebook that will tell you, based on your number of players, how to set up your game. Most relevant right now is the number of species to use. Check the chart for this number, then pick that many species types to use for your game. This can be done randomly, or you can choose specific species. I'll be setting up for a three-player game using the monkeys, pelicans, chameleons, and lions, if you'd like to use some or all of the same species that I'll be showing most. Collect all ten cards for each chosen species, combine them into one stack, then shuffle. The rest of the animal cards can go back into the box and won't be used this game. Next, check that chart again and see how large your grid should be. Mine will be four rows by five columns. Randomly place animal cards into that grid pattern face up. This will not use all of the cards in your deck. Once the grid is done, check the chart one last time to see how many cards each player starts with in their hand. This will normally be six unless you're playing with a full six players, in which case we drop to five card hands. Deal that many cards to each player. Any remaining cards can go back in the box with the unused species. And lastly, place your pile of mountain tiles near the play area. Pause again here while you get your game set up as you see it here, but making sure you have the correct number of rows, columns, and cards in hand for your number of players. We're all set to start playing! In Animix, your goal is to collect the most cards of one or more species, while also making sure that the species will score you as many points as possible. You'll do this by assembling a face-down collection of cards in front of you, sometimes trading those cards out of the center grid. At the end of the game, the player with the greatest number of a species is the only one who will score points from that species, and each species scores differently based on the final patterns in the grid, which we'll go over in a minute. The first thing you'll need to do in your game is to select a first player randomly. If you need a way to do this, then your first player should be the person who most recently touched a mountain token. On a player's turn, they must do one of two options. Option one is to place one of the cards from your hand face down in front of you. This adds it to your collection for the end of the game, and it cannot be removed from your collection or looked at by anyone except you for the rest of this game. The benefit of choosing option number one is that all the information about what you did is kept totally secret from your fellow players. Because the second option you have on your turn is to take one of the face-up animals from the grid and flip it face down in front of you. In order to do this, you must also trade in one of the cards from your hand face-up to where your claimed animal had been. When you do this, you must also place a mountain tile on the card you added to the grid to show that it cannot be removed from that spot for the rest of the game. Now this option gives your fellow players much more information about your collection but it also gives you the ability to affect the grid, adding more points for the animals you're collecting or removing points from those that you think your opponents are working on. Now, surely there's some intense strategy you could get into on your first turn by sitting in silence for 10 minutes with your head in your hands, but we're all learning, and the first game never counts anyway, right? I mean, I haven't even told you the difference between the various animals yet. So let's pause while you take your first turn, and then we'll talk about the animals. Alright, everyone should have taken their first turn, which means that everyone should have exactly one card in their collection, and one fewer card in their hand. Play will continue around the table with our same first player going first each turn, but before that, let's take a look at those animals. Remember, only the player with the most cards for a species at the end of the game will score points for that species, and if there is a tie, the players split those points. Let's start with the monkeys. At the end of the game, we will find the column with the most monkey cards in it. The player with the most monkeys in their collection will receive two points for each monkey card in that column. 
Next up is elephants. Find the row with the most elephants, and the player with the most in their collection will get two points for each elephant in that row. Penguins score their winner two points for each penguin in the largest orthogonally connected group of penguins, so diagonals don't count. Lovebirds score four points for each pair of adjacent lovebirds. Each lovebird can only be counted as a part of one pair. Wolves score two points for each wolf that is on the outside border of the grid at the end of the game. Pelicans score two points for each pelican that is part of the largest diagonally connected group of pelicans. Chameleons score points based on the single chameleon that is orthogonally adjacent to the greatest variety of species. Looking at that chameleon card, the chameleon winner gets two points for each unique species adjacent to it. And chameleons do count. And lastly, the lion winner scores 11 points. Minus one point for each lion in the grid at the end of the game. Plus, there's an added challenge, and that is that there must be at least one lion left in the grid at the end of the game in order for that player to score any points at all. Alright, hopefully you got a taste for how to score points from the species that you're playing with this game. Let's pause while you make sure everyone feels comfortable with the species in play. Then you can also play through your entire first game. The total number of turns you take should be the same as the number of cards you started with in your hand. Unpause when everyone's hand is empty, meaning the game is concluded. And we can go over scoring and see who our winner is. We've reached the end of game number one. The game grid, as well as the cards in front of you, are now locked in until we've determined our winner. Everyone should flip over all the face-down cards in front of them. Then, for each species in your game, see who has the most cards for that species in front of them, and award that player with points based on that species' scoring system. For example, let's look at the lions in my game. This player has the most lions in front of him. Looking at the grid, we know the lions are worth their starting 11 points, minus one point for each of the four lions left in the grid. So that player will receive seven points for winning the lions this game. If two or more players tie for most cards in a species, they split the points for that species evenly, rounding down to the nearest whole number. So if three players tied for this game's pelicans, which are worth eight points, each of those players would receive two points. Once you have awarded points for each species in your game, the player with the highest score is the winner. And if there is a draw for most points, those players share the victory this time. Well, thank you for joining me for this play-along tutorial. You can find more just like it here, and we'll see you next time.